clear you are. Huh. Okay. Looks like I've still got some problems with the clip show. But that's okay. I'm back from break. Now, I do have just a tiny little bit of setup to do, so if you will bear with me. There we go. Oh, Mad, thank you for the hydrate and the next uh, stretch. Okay. We want the DOS version, the, the non-VGA DOS version. We want EGA. Okay, remember that, guys. Please do not make illegal copies of this game. A moment, please. Someone has gone above and beyond and subscribed at Tier 2. Halera, make sure to note this in the ledger, please. Hey, Unstara! Thank you so much for 48 freaking months and a Tier 2 sub at that. You are now a lore keeper for another month. Uh, because the VGA version is a very different game, JH. Instead of being a text parser adventure game, it is a point and click. And it also looks very different. And I really like the original version. Excellent, JH. Holy sh- you're, that is four freaking years. Wow. I did, I just finished Stray on Sara. I was very close to the end. But um, I'm sorry you missed that. It was a really good ending. I do have one little bone to pick with it, but I won't spoil it for those who didn't see it. Now I need to update the category. I literally just got back from break, and we are just going to start Quest for Glory. So we're going to go into Retro, I think. It's so good, Unstara. It's so, so good. I really recommend it. Okay, we should be in retro. No, no, why do you still say stray? We want retro. That happens every once in a while. I update this thing and it doesn't go. That's weird. Oh, I saw that. Thank you, JH. I guess I answered in my head while I was on break and never actually typed it out. But uh, they are former developers at Ubisoft Montpellier and wanted to do their own thing, which is really cool. And yes, it turned out exceedingly well. What a beautiful game. Okay, so. Oh, by the way, you will need the information contained in the printed documentation to successfully complete this game. In other words, it's not just the law, it's a good idea. Okay, so I actually will need to account for that then. Let me make sure I have easy access to the manual. I should have that. I just need to get GOG Galaxy open. Oh yeah, I figured out the, the like, as soon as I loaded up the game for the very first time and the developer said Blue 12, and they abbreviated it in the logo to B12. I had already seen people stream it. And I knew that the robot's name was B12. And I was just like, oh, yep, okay, that explains that. Quest for Glory, where are you? 
Don't mind me. There we go. Okay, there we are. Manual downloaded. Okay, oh, it comes with maps too. That's amazing. Oh, there <laughs> well, it's a it's a map specifically for Quest for Glory 2, which doesn't help us yet, but that will be very handy later. All right, I have the Quest for Glory manual open. So I'll just get that put right there. And I've got the other documentation, so we should be good. Wanted. Hero for the village of Spielberg. Back when manuals were a good thing, manuals are always a good thing. That never changed. The only thing that changed was people's willingness to produce manuals. Let's look at the introduction. Written and directed by Lorianne Cole. It's so good, isn't it, Unstara? Okay, we are gonna be a magic user. Uh, there we, go. there we go. What are we gonna name ourselves? This is perhaps the most important choice we will make in the entire five-game series. Oh, it's not MIDI. This is much earlier than the existence of MIDI. This is way earlier than that. Um, just a moment, please. In breaking news, a librarian has just resubscribed. Thank you very much. Space Vikings, thank you so much for 13 heckin' months. That is amazing. You are now a lore keeper for another month. Okay, let's actually, I'm going to update the stream title as well. There we go. 
Um, not sure if you saw my question, but you prefer text over point and click. I like both a lot, JH, but I most of my fond memories of this game are of this version of this game. What are we going to call our hero? We are going to be a wizard. You're the other way. Oh, wait, what? Daily sub goal. Holy crap, you're right. That means I owe you guys story time again. Thank you. I remember the old 80s adventure games where you had to write out the actions. This is one of those, Space Vikings. Except this one is actually a hybrid. It's one part text parser adventure game, and it's a hybrid RPG as well. So you can see here, unlike, you know, Space Quest and King's Quest and all those, we actually have character stats and character skills and health and stamina and magic points in a lot of ways this is actually it, it it almost is like a precursor to the elder scrolls games because of the way the skill system works uh was going to make an Elder Scrolls joke. It's no joke. You actually, like, when you create your character, you can put points into these skills to set them where you want them to be. But you also, like, to improve them within the game, they improve as you use them, just like in Skyrim. Uh, okay, what are we going to name this guy? Oh, I know. Um, I'm blanking a little bit, but um, ah. there. We had this on a floppy, and our compact computer was a turnkey computer. Oh boy, Candlejack. Okay, let's see. We are not going to have a lot of use of strength, but we might want a little bit. I'm gonna. I'm going to focus on skills first, though. We're going to want to put a lot into magic, so let's... Let's go 60 magic. We're going to put a good number of points into luck, a few more into intelligence, and a lot into magic, I think. And that'll probably be pretty good. They're older than me too, but my dad and I would go pick up old 2.5-inch floppy disk adventure games from the mid-late 80s around Liquidation World. Nice, Space Vikings. Space Quest with Mouse is what I first played ever. Well, these actually, they do work with mice. I... I forgot that they did but they do they just they don't have full mouse support as we would think of it okay here we go this seems like a quiet little town on the porch ahead of you are two people the standing one is large rather ugly and playing with a yo-yo the seated person smoking a pipe look, looks like he might be the sheriff the man with the pipe greets you Welcome to our town. You are lucky to have made it down from the mountains before the snow blocked the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we certainly could use a hero around here. I am Sheriff Schultz Meisterson. This is Otto von Goon, my assistant. What do you call yourself? This text font is weird? How so, J.H.? Not sure it's that readable. Well, I can't really do anything about that, unfortunately, I'm afraid. Good luck in your quest, Jodori. Yeah, it's basically, it's the same as the graphics. They were extremely limited by the amount of pixels that they had. So it's not like they've got true type font support 
or anything like that going on. Examine Sheriff. Schultz appears to be an affable old coot content to smoke his pipe. There's a hardness behind his eyes, however, that gives you reason to believe that he's no pushover. There's more than a hint of ogre about this strange and bulky character. He seems cheerful, though. There are signs over each of the buildings informing you of their purpose. I always want to spell Sheriff with two R's and one F for some reason. You have eye check in four hours, might have to get glasses. Side means Gord has to read everything. Wow, Anstara. But you're not wrong. You have come to the end of the main street. The town wall is to the south. You have an eerie feeling that someone is watching you. I wonder who that could be. There's no getting around it. A shop with its eye on you makes you nervous. This adventurer's guild hall reminds you of the one in your hometown. The traditional moose head and other stuffed monsters, Saurus, Troll, Griffin, Dragon, Cheetar, and the terrible Antwerp, adorn the walls. You see the registration book on the desk and the bulletin board full of job listings. The man seated by the fire must be the guildmaster. He is snoring. Even in death, this monster remains awesome. The plaque reads, Dragon Slain by Baron Stefan von Spielberg. The head is like a panther's, but with a strong human-like quality. It is still rather frightening. The plaque reads, Cheetar Slain by Wolfgang Abentior. It looks like it must have been a particularly nasty troll. You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark forest. The plaque reads, Troll Slain by Wolfgang of Benetur. This crossbreed of an eagle and lion could have torn a man apart when it was still alive. The plaque reads, Griffin Slain by Wolfgang of Benetur. This is certainly a weird one. You've never seen anything quite like it. The plaque reads, Antwerp Slain by Two Guys from Andromeda. Who, you, you might recognize the name two guys from Andromeda. They were the creators of Space Quest. You never saw a purple Saurus before you came to Spielberg, but it looks like a really stupid monster. The plaque reads, Saurus slain by Hans Hof Witten. The plaque under the moose says, Courtesy of Sierra Online Prop Department. It looks like this old guildmaster doesn't do too much adventuring anymore. Still, he looks like he was plenty tough in his day, and he probably has many a tale to tell. Hi. You're not close enough. Ah, I was so busy I didn't notice you come in. Welcome, welcome. It's so seldom we have new adventurers here. Most people think this valley is cursed. This is, of course, where an adventurer can find out where there is a need for someone brave and courageous. There are jobs on the bulletin board over there. It is also a good place to talk about adventures on a cold afternoon. We used to play cards here once a week as well, but there are too few adventurers in Spielberg anymore. They all died at the hands of monsters or brigands, or they just became too old. Ask about Saras. Oh, those are nothing. Anyone can kill a Saras. Ask about Antwerp. One year, this valley was overrun by those odd and terrible monsters. 
Schultz and I fought long and hard to eliminate them completely. We might have failed even so, had it not been for those two peculiar tourists who came to our aid. Ask about moose. That was the most vicious moose I ever ran into. Nearly bit my nose off. Ask about troll. It's been a while since Schultz and I killed one, the one on the wall. It is fortunate that few trolls remain. They're deadly. Ask about Cheetar. Watch out for Cheetars. I bear the scars of my last fight with one to this day. One day, years ago, a pair of dragons tried to take over our valley. We adventurers rode out to meet them. I can still see Stefan von Spielberg charging forward on his black horse. He slew the one whose head adorns the wall above our fireplace. The other one flew off. People say that they can sometimes see that other dragon flying high overhead, but it has never dared attack us again. Okay. Examine board. Reward for return of lost ring. Inquire at the healers. This poster is rather dusty and faded. The picture is of a small child with braids. Reward of 50 gold coins for the safe return of Elsa von Spielberg. Inquire at the Spielberg Castle Gates. Wanted. Brigand leader. Description. Unknown appearance. Wears a cloak. Must provide proof of leader's identity. Reward of 60 gold coins and title of Hero of the Realm. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. Reward of 30 gold coins for the capture or death of the brigand warlock. Description. Short, ugly, and wears brightly colored robes. Has habit of laughing continually. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. Notice. Spell components needed. Cash or trade for potions. Inquire at the healers. This poster seems to have been here a while. It has a picture of a handsome but arrogant young man. Reward of 50 gold coins for information leading to the return of Baronet Barnard von Spielberg. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. The last entry was made several years ago. It says Baronet Barnard von Spielberg killed a troll near the Flying Falls on this 23rd day of October. You see an ordinary pen and ink. You sign your name into the adventurer's logbook with a flourish. I have 13 points now. Excellent. You're not... I'm right in front of the freaking door, game. Jeez. She's deeply asleep in her rocker. Um, there. I have... Oh, that's right. Food rations. I forgot you actually need to eat. Five food rations, one dagger, one leather armor. I have four gold coins, ten silver coins... And I know exactly one spell, Zap, which I have 10 skill in. <laughs> Impressive design, but merely decorative. A pentagram used in incantations to conjure spirits. Paraphernalia and apparatus. Odds and ends. A replacement part for a magical facelift. A toaster oven very rarely used, electricity not having been invented yet. Things and stuff. We like things and stuff. A hooded robe for when it rains in here. Crystal balls, useful only to those initiated into the ways of witches. Darned if I know. Books dealing with sorcery, necromancy, and other occult subjects. You're finally giving Critical Role another shot. Where are you starting from, Space Vikings? Is the Magic House always magic, or does it depend on what class you pick? Oh no, it's always magic, JH. It's always magic. 
Pencil and Chafe. Very good for avoiding radar. Bottles with Mephitic Potions. It's a frog. Dried up Mantray. Manta Jerky. Odds and Ends. Accoutrements and Equipment. Magical Junk and Mystical Garbage. Books dealing with sorcery, necromancy, and other occult subjects. Okay. Yes, you have found a cleverly hidden representation of the starship you-know-who. I am Zara, and my companion is Damiano. The items in this shop are designed for those skilled in the use of magic. We have very little for ones such as you who have not been initiated, but what we have could prove useful. Ask about spells. We sell several magical spells on study scrolls. You may purchase Flame Dart for 60 silver, Fetch for 40 silver, or the Open Spell for 30 silver. A cleverly hidden representation of the starship you know who, J.H. I watched their first campaign, kind of fell off on the second campaign because I'm not really a fan of Talison. Really, Space Vikings? Okay. The scrolls we spell are magical. You have but to read the spell and you will learn it. I also know that you can find a wonderful spell if you learn the secret of Arana's Peace. May this aid you on your quest. As you read the spell scroll, the spell is ingrained in your mind. Ooh, man. That used most of my money. Okay. going to have to get some more cash. Only my own opinion. I bet most people like him. I just find his characters are not to my taste. Fair enough. Fair enough. Be interesting to see what you think of his character for campaign three. I won't say anything, of course. Watch the first episode of Campaign 3 and his character seems better, to be honest. Okay. You can smell apples as you approach this corner. The pretty young centaur looks at you and says, Good day and welcome to Spielberg. Do you wish to buy some nice fresh fruits or vegetables? There are still some apples left from last season in the barrel. You may buy ten for a silver since they're so small. We will have fresh cherries in a couple of months. You carefully select ten of the best apples from the barrel and pay the lady a silver piece. Eh, I probably... Okay, well, we'll probably talk to her again soon. This looks like a dry goods store, but smells like a musty library. The stove feels nice on such a crisp day. Behind the counter and on the shelves are many and various items for sale. The shopkeeper appears to ignore you while he reads a book. It looks pretty normal. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing, Aunt Sara. Oh, I'm sorry, the shopkeeper blurts out. I didn't notice you coming in. My, you look like an adventurer. We don't see too many around here. The brigands tend to get rid of most adventurers before they make it into town. 
You may be in luck. I carry a modest amount of adventurer's equipment behind the counter. Would you like to make a purchase? Here you are. Thank you for your patronage. Okay, so I've got an empty flask, and I still have a little bit of money left. You are in the northwest corner of town. There are a butcher's shop and a bakery on the north side of the street. Across from them are the backs of buildings on the next street over. The tavern in the corner looks rather run down, and the alley beside it is dark. On the other side of the tavern is a rather practical-looking building like a workshop. The grimy window lets little light into this tavern. It smells like stale ale and other more unpleasant things. The floor is covered with dirt, and the bar with sticky beer. Smoke appears to be rising from the center cask behind the bar. To your right, two gamblers are playing cards. The bartender glares at you as you enter, and so does the ugly goon on the left. You get the impression that you are not welcome. Nothing but a dirty floor. There appears to be a trap door beneath the goon, but he's blocking it very effectively. This goon looks really tough and mean. He's not someone to pick a fight with. You see a crumpled piece of paper under the stool. The world-famous troll's sweat is always fresh. Dragon's breath is the house specialty, and it's Crusher's personal favorite. The bartender looks tough from his crew cut to his boots. The only thing about him is his soft about him is his tattoo, which says Mama. You pick up the note. You smooth out the piece of paper and read. B. He's starting to act suspicious. Better save this drop for emergencies. B. The butcher's shop seems to be closed. Oh, there's a note on that door too. It must be closed. I would second the recommendation for Campaign 2. It's really, really good. Your guy has quite a tan. Well, you know, there's not a lot of time in the hero business for uh, just hanging out indoors. Even for a wizard, you got to be out there doing stuff, getting money, all that fun stuff. The breeze is cool, but you feel a shiver deeper than just the cold. You are on your own in a very dangerous place. Got a new Pathfinder campaign coming up. Buddy has converted War of the Burning Sky to Pathfinder 2. Very nice. That sounds pretty fun. The bright smell of fresh herbs mingles with the aroma of wood smoke as you near a hut by the side of the road. On either side of the road are a large oak and a hut. The road itself leads north to a castle in the distance and south to the crossroads. The tree is a large oak. There's a nest on a single limb that seems to reach out toward the hut. The house looks cheery and well-kept. It has the sign of the healer above the entrance. That's the one that had the 
um, the, the quest posted for retrieval of a ring. You hear the bolt, the inside bolt slide open. Come on in. The fragrance of the herbs mingle with some other rather pungent odors as you step into the healer's house. We played more of the Burning Sky in D&D 3.5, and I played a druid grappler based on Ric Flair from the WWF called Rock Flair. So I'm reprising the character. Oh my god, Vikings. Lovely day, isn't it? My, you look very healthy for an adventurer. You must be new. What can I do for you? I can sell you potions if you like. I can also buy spell components if you are interested in gathering some for me. Don't mind me. I always have so much to do around here. Ask about ring. It is shaped in gold like a braid of the herb alphales, which with entwined leaves. I don't know how I lost it. I hardly ever take it off. Ask about potions. I make and sell healing potions, magic potions, vigor potions, and undead unguent. The potions will cost you 40 silvers for a healing potion, 60 silvers for a magic potion, 20 silvers for a vigor potion, and 100 silvers for undead unguent, which I don't know how to pronounce. Petrified icicles and greens. This and that. Whatever is boiling there is either soup or some sort of potion. Ingredients. Cheesecloth. Small on a prehistoric scale, but still a pterosaur. The Terrasaurus litter box. Wow. I will pay you for Cheetar Claws, Troll Beard, Magic Mushrooms, and Flowers from Irana's Peace. Oh, by the way, if you happen to find a ring on your adventures, I lost my favorite gold ring. I will give a reward to the one who returns it. Soup is a kind of potion. It is. It is. The castle looms over the gatehouse and looks rather impressive. Are you speaking to me? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Could you repeat yourself? Hello. I'm here. What do you want? Open the castle gates. Very well. No one enters the castle without the Baron's permission. Okay, then. You're in the courtyard of Castle Spielberg. The castle's stable looks like it holds about six horses. It could use some cleaning up. That'll be a good place for strength training, but that's not exactly high on a wizard's list of priorities. We might still do it, though, because having better strength will help eventually with, you know, being able to equip better armor. Let's go this way. The handsome centaur has a look of pride and dignity as he rakes his field. Noticing that you are addressing him, the centaur stops and gives you his attention. I can grow enough on this little plot to feed my family and the village. You should see this field at harvest time. 
I'm afraid I can't tell you much about that. Our stand is in the northeast corner of Spielberg. The produce is not the of is not of the finest this time of year. But you will not find better than fruit of fruit come harvest time. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna pronounce that one. We grow fine fruit in our little orchard and sell it at our stand in town. There you will find fresh cherries in the spring, peaches in summer, and apples in the fall. The brigands attacked me a few months ago. I am a strong fighter and my hooves are deadly, but there were too many of them. They nearly killed me. My right leg was broken and there is no pride for a centaur who cannot run. If it had not been for the unlikely intervention of their leader, I would be dead. Ask about leader, that's interesting. The leader came up while the brigands attacked me and forced them to stop, ordering them not to hurt people from the town. Then, to my amazement, the healer gave me a healing potion and had me carried to the healer's house. It was hard to judge the leader, whose face was obscured by a large helm, but there was compassion unlike a brigand. Okay. The healer lives just east of here. She is very skilled with potions. Uh, all right, thanks, sir. We need to check out the inn. That, of course, is a very traditional hero-y kind of spot. I bet he can fertilize the field himself being half-horse. Wow, Vikings. You're probably not wrong, though. Welcome, welcome, traveler, to the Hero's Tale Inn. I am Shameen at your service. May you find what you seek here. You see a small cat-like creature, known as a kata. You've heard that katas are common in the southern deserts. I have run this inn for three years now with Shima. We had thought to return to Shapir, my homeland, with Abdullah Du, but alas, fate has decreed otherwise. Oh, please, Vikings. He is no Khajiit. These guys predate the Khajiit. The Khajiit wish they were Katas. Collection of designer plates loaned to the Heroes Inn by Mary Meister. The warmth of the fire feels good on such a chilly day. The proprietor of the inn apparently thinks so, too. Cats always seem to gravitate to a warm hearth. Very nice room, very soft beds, finest in town, only five silvers a night. Very good food, very good drink, finest in town. Sit, rest, you will be served by Maishima. Alas, this humble innkeeper is ignorant of that about which you ask. It is mid-afternoon on day one. Okay. Oh, you know what I should probably do? Oh, these must be from my other save. Okay, well, that's fine. I forgot I had played it a little bit a few months ago. The hollow log looks somberly back with its single giant eye, and you know at once that nothing is to be gained by investigating this gaunt relic of a more vertical past. Uh, 
I actually don't want to go too far on day one. Oh. Bruno hangs around the town gates. He will sell information. I don't have enough money to want to buy a whole lot of information. Whoa. He saw you casting a spell and he already had a dagger in his hand. It doesn't pay to try to fight with someone who uses poison daggers. I wasn't trying to cast at him. I thought I was a pretty safe distance away. Wow. It's a good thing I had just saved. But will he sell bingo cards for the Wednesday game? That's a very good question, Lady Lunar. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Your weapon is now magically charged. Oh, that's how that works. Okay. Uh, how do I do... Ah, control S. Okay. Well, I'm gaining XP. The less type, the better. I'm very sorry to hear that. I hope things improve very quickly. I'm doing pretty good. We just finished Stray, and now we're starting one of my favorite Sierra games of all time. Like, let's, let's remember not to cast spells around Bruno. Still mid-afternoon, huh? I wonder if I have enough. Hmm. I did just save. Ask about spells. We sell several magical spells on Sturdy Scrolls. You may purchase Flame Dart for 60 silver, Fetch for 40 silver, or the Open Spell for 30 silver. Um, I would really like Flame Dart. But I doubt I have the cash. I detect that you have not the money to purchase that item. Do not toy with me. Okay. So we're going to need more money. I don't think I can afford any of the others now either. That's kind of unfortunate. The late frosts of winter give way to the greenery of spring. There is the crisp smell of cedar in the air. This forest seems to be unusually still and quiet. It's the beautiful Spiegel Sea Mirror Lake. You pause for some peaceful reflection. The roar of the waterfall fills your ears and the cold spray dampens your face as you approach. 
A river plunges from more than a hundred feet down the face of the cliff. A doorway has been built into the side of the cliff. Hmm. I don't think I can climb up there just yet. Uh oh. Sunset approaches. Okay. The merchant is a rather fat man with a small mustache and beard. He wears a turban. Oh, it is indeed sad and dangerous times we live in when a man who struggles daily to keep from starving should be robbed of all his earthly possessions. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish food or drink? With great pleasure, I will serve you a fine meal. Two weeks ago, I was about to become wealthy beyond my dreams. I, Abdullah Du, would be the first merchant into the valley this year. But my life was shattered by those vile brigands. The band of brigands ambushed us just as we crossed the pass into the valley. They first used some magic which blinded us. Then they overwhelmed my six guards and my assistants. All my trade goods were taken from me right before my very eyes. Why the brigand leader spared my life, I do not know. I am now but a beggar living off the generosity of my friends. Thank you. Okay. The food tastes surprisingly good. The beverage goes down smoothly and well. They were about there were about twelve brigands, including a minotaur, if you can believe it. Their leader was wearing a hooded cloak. I could not see the face, but he had a high pitched voice. There was also some sort of warlock who giggled a lot. Perhaps it was my eyes that deceived me, but I could swear there was no blood in that odd magician. I am sorry, but I'm much too broken to talk about such things right now. I have lost everything. Ah, uh, Shapir, beautiful land of golden sands and shining sun, the heart of civilization. Alas, she is plagued with fierce genie and ifrits who seek to drive all men and katas from the land. But I can speak no more of the homeland I shall never see again. Instead, I will die in this cold, forsaken land bereft of all I love. My good friends Shima and Chamin, owners of this inn, are the finest of all the Kata people that ever graced Shapir. But for their kindness, I would have starved long since. Okay. Hmm. What more should we ask about? Okay. All that I own once owned is gone, alas. We'll probably end up talking more with him later. May you dream of all the rewards you deserve. You thank Shamin and pay him five silvers for the room. I forgot it was kind of expensive. You really don't start with a lot of money, I guess. Asleep at the Hero's Tale Inn, the sleep heals and refreshes you. Okay. Um, 
Cast spell, fight, escape, pause game. That's probably good. Uh, I'm going to go take myself a quick break. So if you folks will bear with me, if you need to get up yourselves and grab some food or a drink, now's a really good time and I'll meet you back here in just a bit. Not a bad ragdoll, that one. Not bad. And maybe, oh my god. <laughs> um, you okay, sir? I think we're gonna use the Michael Bolton Doug trio here that we just evolved. That works. Should be a vent in that. Uh oh. Um, let's transmit this before I. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Um, it's a good thing I wasn't planning on taking off. <sighs> oh. Whoop. Whoops. There you go. There you go. Ah! Oh, you picked a very good time to show up again, Uthgur. Thank you. I think we're going to go with Galaxy, unless Defiant is... Actually, Defiant's not too bad. Let's stick with the Galaxy, though. That looks good to me. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> uh. The hell was that? I've never seen that before. I do have The Witcher 3 for PS4. Oh, shoot. Nice. Not bad. I'll see what we have ready for Mr. Legrand. I know it's here somewhere. I saw it a while ago. <laughs> Freddy Krueger sweater. Commander. You can't outrun me. The commander. <laughs> Ranger is lit. Reinforcements are coming. Oh man. The, co the commander. 
Walker leaped off to his own death. Hey, what time for him? this so much. Okay, I'm back. All right. So, I think our priority here is going to be improving our stats, maybe trying our hand at some combat, and most importantly, getting money. Thank you. Oh. The white stag takes a mighty leap. was not expecting this. You follow the stag into this forest corner. You feel as though the eyes of the forest are watching you. You watch the stag, fascinated with his grace and beauty. There is something special about this place. You are in a strange and beautiful part of the forest. There is something special about this place. The large gnarled oak seems to draw your attention. I am the Dryad, Keeper of the Woods. Are you one with the woods? Then you shall aid me, and I shall aid you in your quest. Bring me a seed from the spore-spitting spiria of the north that I may plant it elsewhere in order to preserve these rare and magical plants. Thus will you become a true friend of the forest. Spore-spitting spiria, okay. <clears throat> remember how that was spelled, but that's okay. The trees look more vibrant than most of the forest. There is a ring of mushrooms on the northwest side of the clearing. The ring of mushrooms contains mushrooms slightly larger than the ones you are used to. I too would like to become a true friend of the forest. At least this dryad doesn't make you drink a very sketchy, uh, you know, 
drink composed of various elements of the forest that gets you completely blitzed and makes you pass out and speak in tongues. Unlike a certain other game that I could name. You pick a handful of the smaller mushrooms and carefully put them away in your backpack. Uh-oh. I don't think I'm ready to try three-on-one combat just yet. Oh. Looking around, you get the feeling that this is not a very friendly place to be. The skulls on top of the fence have eerily glowing eyes. The large skull on the gate seems to stare vacantly at you. The hut is a strange little house perched on chicken legs. I remember this place. We don't want to be here just yet. Oh, this is the spore spitting spiria plant. You've never seen anything quite like them. They're pretty in a grotesque way. covered with a blanket of flowers unusual for this early in the spring. It is warm even though, the sur even though surrounded by the light snows of winter. The air has the fresh, clean scent of the mountains accompanied by numerous perfume-like fragrances. A large carved stone lies flat on the ground. You feel as though someone gentle was watching over you. You feel that you are safe here. I'd like to point out Hard to make out, but the words on this rock say Irana's peace. The large stone appears to be ancient and deliberately placed. Marks carved into the stone almost look like writing. The stone has the words Irana's peace carved upon the top. There are some runes carved along the side. It reads, If thy will is magic, so shall I share. Open this stone and claim what is there. In a hole hidden beneath the ancient stone, someone has placed a scroll. Picky, picky, picky. The scroll vanishes even if you read even as you read the magical runes upon it. You now have the knowledge to cast a calm spell. All kinds of colorful and fragrant flowers and grasses cover the meadow. As you pick a variety of the sweet smelling flowers, they seem to glow in your hands. You put them safely away. The small tree is the most amazing. It bears blossoms and fruit at the same time, and the fruit on its boughs seems to shyly appear and disappear, shimmering. The fruit is very soft and juicy. It would be impossible to keep in your pack. The sweet, juicy fruit of the tree is amazingly satisfying and refreshing. my vitality increased. Day is dawning on day two. Okay, so... Um... We've barely begun the day. Mm. 
but I think we've got several items that the healer had requested now. Uh, I actually, oh, sorry, sir. Didn't mean to intrude. I was just passing through. Thank you. I often use flowers from Arana's piece in potion making. Here are your silvers. These are very nice. I'll dry them and grind them into a powder. Let me think. Oh yes, I said these are worth a gold. Here you are. So 24 silver coins. That's not too bad. We can make a little more money as well. And train up strength and probably vitality at the same time. You looking for some work? Good. Come in here and take a rake. I love this little animation they do. Okay, come on over here. The stableman hands you some coins and says, Now you're five silvers richer. Okay, so we've got 29 silver. We've got food rations. I know, David. How are you doing? It's good to see you again. I hope you're doing well. Oh, um... The man has the muscles of a trained athlete and is apparently quite skilled with the sword. If you are addressing me, sir, you must respect me enough to address me to my face. <clears throat> I am the Weapon Master. The sword is the finest of all weapons. It requires an equal measure of skill and strength. Please don't bore me, young adventurer. Ask me about something interesting to me. I am a skilled teacher as well as a skilled fighter. However, the combat style I teach relies on the subtle alternation of strike and parry. As I observe that you have no skill in the use of parry, you would receive no benefit from my lessons. Okay. Well, see you later then. Busy day, but glad to be relaxing. It's always a perk to see these Sierra classics get some love. I plan to play a whole lot of them now that we've started. I'm going to go through the Space Quest series for sure and the Quest for Glory series for sure. Um, I'm open to the possibility of playing King's Quest and I for certain want to play through the two Laura Bow games because I've never actually played the second one. Okay, so let's see. I have three spells now. I gained a little skill with open. Greeny, you just missed us uh, visiting the Dryad, 
and earning the chance to become a friend of the forest. How are you doing? It's good to see you this evening. Love Colonel's Bequest. It's in your top. Nice. I really like that one as well, though I barely remember it. It's been so long. Um, what else do I need? Oh, I should go back to the healer's place, actually, and get a list of what she's looking for. Cheetar Claws, Troll Beard, Magic Mushrooms, and Flowers from Arana's Peace. Okay, so really the only ones that I'm likely to get any time in the near future are the Magic Mushrooms and Flowers from Arana's Peace. About to have a party. Oh, oh, oh. You wouldn't happen to be having the party at the apartment in Mass Effect 3, would you, Greeny? I'm really sad I'm going to be missing that. <laughs> What were your thoughts on Cat Game? It was phenomenally good. It was so, so good. It was such a beautiful game. I completely agree with the internet when they say that it's a 20 out of 10 game. Oh, that's awesome, Greeny. That was one of my favorite parts of the entire trilogy. Okay... Weapon is now magically charged. Oh, um... Yeah, the thing about doing the stables is you earn a little bit of money. You gain some strength. Oh, I gained some intelligence as well. And I gained some vitality. But it cost me stamina. Midday, okay. Yeah, David, I started the stream this evening playing Stray. We had left off about an hour from the end of the game last time I streamed it, last, I guess, Thursday. And so I needed to finish that off. So we got to the end of that, and it was wonderful. And since we were very far from the end of stream, instead of stopping stream, because that would be silly, I started playing this. Because I intend to play this all day tomorrow. Tomorrow, by the way, uh, this is probably a good time to mention this, I will be doing the long stream of the month. Every stream I do a long stream. Um, this month I actually ended up doing two but just because I had extra time last week. But I'm still doing the long stream of the month, which I normally do on the last Friday of the month, which would be tomorrow. And I'm going to be starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Eastern Time. And I will be going until my normal end time at 4 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to be playing Quest for Glory. And so we're going to go, and if by some chance I actually happen to finish Quest for Glory 1, we'll just roll right into Quest for Glory 2. But I actually think there's a pretty good chance we'll still be playing the first one by the time I end stream. What the? What? It must be your imagination. What would a submarine be doing in a fantasy adventure? Perhaps you'd rather be playing Codename Iceman. It has a sub submarine. <laughs> you should do a long stream one day greenie you don't do anything but long streams you're always on for like 10 plus hours <laughs> Actually, that is super impressive, David. Uh, JH is right. It, it's been everywhere on Twitch. Stray has, like, taken over the internet. Um... The rocks are too slick from the spray of the waterfall for your limited climbing skill. 
my climbing skill is zero, so that's going to be a problem. Thank you very much, Greeny. Have fun with your party. I will be wishing I was there. <clears throat> oh, no, we don't want to follow the stag this time. I will go down this way, though. Oh. By golly, it's an Antwerp. Antwerps are on the endangered species list. They are rarely seen. It's well worth it. It's it's such a good game. It's really fun and gives me very, very serious Half-Life 2 vibes in a lot of really good ways. Plus, I mean, you get to play as a cat. Let's see, what's the fastest way to get to Arana's piece? I think we basically ran straight down from there, didn't we? Oh, brigand. Mid-afternoon. You take another handful of the lovely fragrant flowers. Looks like the brigand has gone away. That's good. No, wait. I'm going to go back this way. Thirty four silver coins. Okay. Well, well, I'm almost at 40 silver. I can try to get mushrooms again. Oh, it won't be there. Hang on.
Now, I wonder if that is... Uh-oh, what? I wonder if that's a limited... Like, you can get so much money for the flower collecting and the mushroom collecting, and that's it. Or if, after a while, she'll use them up and need them again. Okay, so now we've got 59 silver coins. <clears throat> that means very soon I should be able to afford the flame dart spell that I want. Mid-afternoon, day two. How are my stats looking? Vitality has gone up pretty good. We're at vitality 23, experience 31. 57 puzzle points. I like that they distinguish puzzle points from experience. I'm almost completely out of stamina. That's fun. And I've used some magic points too. Which is odd. I remember only casting a couple of spells, which means I must have re regained some magic points over time. Let me see. I think instead of staying at the inn tonight, because I am on a bit of a mission, I want to go back to Arana's Peace, because if I remember correctly, you can safely stay the night there. And the tree will feed you. Your hunger has been totally satisfied. You don't need another piece of fruit. Okay. Hey, Hammer, how's it going? You can't just sleep. You just can't sleep during the daytime. Oh, well, crap. <clears throat> oh. Uh, oh crap. <laughs> wow, I'm not very good in a fight. <clears throat> 29 silver, oh no. Okay, so... We need to go back and get the mushrooms and sell all the flowers and the mushrooms then is what needs to happen. We can do that. That's not too bad. How are things going, Hammer? It's good to see you. Hope all is well. I think it was up here. Yep.
Okay. Okay, so yes, we're back to 59. Let's save the game then. <clears throat> well, I've already done the training at the castle, so I can't make more money that way. I don't think I'm likely to survive a fight. What's my stats at? I've got four stamina points and I'm... Wow. How am I down to nine health points? What the heck? I guess I'll just... I'll have to bite the bullet. We're going to stay at the inn. It's mid-afternoon, though. It's not going to let me sleep. What am I going to do for the rest of the time? There are some other spells I could buy. Stamina, which is now down to three. It's because I'm running around. Running uses stamina, but it also builds your vitality stat. And vitality is what determines your current stamina point total, so it's not a terrible thing to get that, you know, boosted. You just have to be careful because, you know, unless you buy a whole bunch of stamina potions, which are very expensive, you can find yourself in a tough spot if you've got low stamina and you have to fight something. Hmm. Not sure what else to do right now. I think we'll go back to the guild house. The guild hall, rather. The writing on this page looks very recent. It says, I, Joe Dury, have come to Spielberg to become a hero. Reward for the return of Lost Ring. Inquire at the healers. Reward of 50 gold coins for the safe return of Elsa von Spielberg. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. Reward of 30 gold coins for the capture or death of the brigand warlock. Description, short, ugly, wears brightly colored robes, has habit of laughing continually. Wanted, brigand leader. Description, unknown appearance, wears a cloak, must provide proof of leader's identity. Reward of 60 gold coins and title of hero of the realm. Spell components needed. Cash or trade for potions, inquire at healers. 50 gold coins for information leading to the return of Baronet Bernard von Spielberg, inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. I don't want to go back to the magic shop until I can afford Flame Dart, because that's what I think of as my primary combat spell in this game. <clears throat> you are so exhausted that everything you do hurts. That's what happens when you run out of stamina. And that's a big part of why I died in that fight against the goblin. A thin man with very patched clothing holds out an empty bowl. Thanks. You know, it's really tough trying to make a living begging in this town since the brigands started scaring all the trade away. 
This used to be such a nice place to live. My advice to you is not to take up begging. It just doesn't pay. And don't go out at night. I remember when people used to stroll around town at night. Now the only people out late are thieves. And outside of town, man, you don't dare go out there after dark. The night gaunts will get you for sure. Nobody's ever lived to tell what the night gaunts are. I sure don't want to find out. A word of warning to you. Don't drink the dragon's breath. After 10 minutes rest, you feel better. Okay, so that gave me a few more stamina points. And even a health point, I think. I might have regained a hit point or so. Hello again, my friend. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish food or drink? Okay, excellent. I am Abdullah Du, son of Ali, grandson of Hassan, and formerly master merchant of Shapir. Now I am but a penniless burden upon my friends. <clears throat> um, no blood. Two weeks ago, I was about to become wealthy beyond my dreams. I, Abdullah Du, would be the first merchant into the valley this year, but my life was shattered by those vile brigands. The band of brigands ambushed us just as we crossed the pass into the valley. They first used some magic which blinded us, then they overwhelmed my six guards and my assistants. Ugh. Alas, had I known magic, perhaps I could have turned the tide against those abominable brigands. Their magic did not seem so strong, but they outnumbered my poor caravan by two to one. Hmm. That's a new tidbit. Their magic isn't very powerful. Interesting. Nineteen health, nineteen stamina. Excellent. Okay, and fifty silver. I've still got flowers and a few mushrooms. <clears throat> We can test the idea that maybe we can sell to her on other days. Yeah, okay, thanks anyway.
Five silvers richer. Okay. Excellent. That can, I don't remember if we can go across the other side of the screen. I know there's these stables over there. Oh, hey. Who might you be? What's up? Go away. This is just the barracks for us guards. I'm not here to answer your stupid questions. Go talk to Carl the Gatekeeper. He talks to anyone about almost anything. Okay, fine. Whatever. No wonder I don't remember that. <laughs> The Baron of Bernard von Spielberg was a proud young man with dark hair and the eyes of his father, the Baron. He rode off one morning, and his horse returned without him. The horse had been raked by the claws of some large animal. There is still a reward offered for the safe return of the Baronet, but I fear he is dead. Elsa von Spielberg was a lovely young child with braided brown hair and bright blue eyes like her mother, the Baroness, used to have. A large winged creature flew over the castle walls, grabbed Elsa, and vanished before the guards could fire upon it. We searched everywhere for her, but to no avail. Even the jester, Yorick, joined the search for her. The Baron sent a troop of guards to storm Baba Yaga's hut, but I think their skulls sit atop her fence now. Elsa von Spielberg would be about eighteen now. The powerful ogress Baba Yaga is the cause of all the Baron's misfortune. She is a vile creature who knows much magic. <clears throat> he was a very jolly fool who loved to laugh. He was devoted to Elsa and swore he would not return until Elsa was safe. I wouldn't know much about that. I don't get around much these days. The Baron von Spielberg lost most of his guards trying to defeat Baba Yaga. There are now too few guards to take out the brigands who still rob our people and drive away the traitors. They hide somewhere near the edge of this valley. The leader of the brigands must be a good strategist. He has organized and led many raids which result in much treasure and little loss on the part of the brigands. Without their leader, the brigands would soon flee. The brigands are protected by a magic user. Not much is known about him, but he seems to use more magic potions and powders than spells. So we asked about Elsa, we asked about the Baronet, we asked about the Brigand Leader and the Brigand Warlock. I'm trying to think of anything else. Okay, thanks anyway, sir. Uh, the problem is, we're down to 55 silver, because I had to buy food and lodging last night. Mm. David, if you happen to still be there, you don't remember what the conversion rate is between silver and gold. <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out if I've got enough to buy flames, uh, the flame dart spell. 
Let's at least go back to Zara's place and see what the prices are like. We sell several magical spells on Sturdy Scrolls. Flame Dart for 60 silver. Damn it. Okay. That answers that. I can't do it. Fetch for 40 or open for 30. See, I would definitely have an immediate use for the fetch spell. And I almost kind of feel like I have to use it. Ugh. Hmm. No, I'm going to hold up for flame dart. Five silver short. I think what we need to do is we we need to get into some fighting. Just gonna walk back and forth until I find somebody to battle. Actually, no. We'll go this way. You are in a clearing at the edge of the forest. The road you have been following is completely blocked by a very recent avalanche. Oh, it pauses while I'm typing. That's very inconvenient. What's the... There's a keyboard shortcut for cast spell. Control C. Okay. That's useful. There seems to be a fox north of the road. Help me, brave and kind hero. simple spring trap and you can easily open it. In exchange for your kindness, I will give you some advice and a bit of information. First of all, it sometimes pays off to be polite even to rude people. As for the amusing tidbit, Baba Yaga put an enchantment on the Baron's daughter some years back. To break the spell, you need to talk to the Dryad. Au revoir, ta-ta, see you sometime. Well, that was 
interesting. I don't remember that. I remember the information the fox gave me because I already knew it, but I don't remember the encounter at all. That's cool. I would love a Saurus encounter right about now, or possibly a goblin, although a Saurus would probably be easier. Maybe I should go back to the route between the farmer's field and Irana's Peace. I seem to run into all kinds of stuff there. Although, uh, to be fair, the stuff that I ran into up there was mostly brigands, and I don't really want to deal with one of them right now. I'm not nearly skilled enough, and I would die. We're going to give up the road and go back down this way again. Oh. Well... That's unfortunate. Why did my score drop? What did I do that gained me so many points? I was at like 72 points or something. I wonder if it was the fox. We'll make this trip a time or two and see if we can run into the fox again. Excellent. There we go. That was it. 74. Okay. See you later, Fox. Thanks for the points. Damn it. Next time we run into that fox, I'm saving the game. <laughs> I actually got real close to killing that stupid Saurus.
Just looking through the manual as we go. Don't mind me. I'm trying to see if I can find spell descriptions. Wow. There's no description of the spells in the manual. What the hell? Okay. Saved. No more having to redo that. Yep, yeah, basically. How's it going, Mr. Soggy Roman? So we know we can find goblins and sauruses on these maps. Went to work today, how did that go? Come on, adventurer snack out here. Oh, that's not fun. Well, at least it's over now. Oh, hello. Hey, I won. In your face, goblin. By the way, has anybody noticed? I can't, I can sort of see, but can't really see very well. Are we having the same problem with missing dialogues? on screen in Quest for Glory 1 that we've been having in Space Quest because I was going through doing a hell of a lot of clipping over the last couple of days and I got like a million clips from Space Quest and so I saw many many instances of what you guys were talking about where I was reading stuff and there was nothing on screen and it's really weird I don't get how that's even possible but apparently it's possible so I am at a bit of a loss but I don't know if it's happening here or not. It's dead, of course. It doesn't smell very good, either. You search your opponent. You find seven silver coins and carefully place them in your pouch. 62! Now, hopefully I can get a little bit more silver. I'm kind of low on health and stamina, but... My strength, vitality, and luck all increase. That's pretty good. Are you telling me that an old-school adventure game doesn't provide convenient info and that instead you have to experiment and try everything yourself? I am not sure I can contain all of my shock. Wow, Ansara. I don't think I've seen it here, but I haven't paid much attention due to RimWorlding at the same time. That's fair, JH. Speaking of RimWorld, I'm getting increasingly curious to try the PlayStation 5 version of RimWorld when that releases, because the reviews I'm seeing of the console version are nothing short of stellar. You've only been here for a few minutes. That's fair.
midday on day three. I think what I might do is I'm going to go buy my spell. And that's going to put me at a bit of risk because I'm not going to be able to afford a room at the inn tonight or food. But I can go to Arana's Peace. You have not seen it. Interesting. Yeah, uh, RimWorld has come out for the Xbox Series X and X. And I, I don't know if it's released yet, but it's coming out for Xbox and for PlayStation. May this aid you on your quest. And okay, and that gave me points. I'm going to freaking save the game there. Yeah, but apparently they have completely redone the entire interface of the game specifically for consoles. And they've apparently done it exceptionally well. People really, really, really like it. I was trying to type up my phone, betrayed me that I had not seen any instances of text failing to appear on screen in this. Those times that you checked. Okay. Maybe it's just the one game then. We can hope at least. This is not D and D. I can't just take a long rest anywhere. Wow. I'm not approaching, I'm just passing by. Stop interrupting me. Okay, I definitely don't want to fight him. Got a bit more stamina now, but my health is still pretty bad.
that actually uses a fair bit of my uh, mana. Don't have it. My spells are Open, Zap, Calm, and Dart, or Flame Dart. up all my stamina just in case. I'm kind of locked into staying at Arana's Peace this evening because I can't afford the inn and there's no way I'm getting enough money. The unfortunate thing is that I'm kind of up the creek health-wise. an option on Sara. Except that you can't really do it during the day and I'm not a thief. Like your th your three class options in this game are fighter, thief and mage. So that actually is a possibility. But I'm not a thief, and so I don't have a lot of the options that would be available to me for doing crime stuff. Ah! Crap. Um... You kind of have that option, actually. The way the game works is you start with a certain number of points in various things. Um in various skills and attributes and you spend points to increase them from a pool of 50. You can open up spells or skills that you do not have but instead of costing five points for five skill or you know points in the attributes instead it costs you 15 for five. So a thief could very easily acquire the magic skill 
And if I had wanted to, I could get, you know, the throwing skill or the climbing skill or the stealth skill or the pick lock skill. I probably should have gotten stealth, actually. Um, but, yeah, it's, you know, it's, um, I can't get a description of the spells, damn it. It's too late now. I can't do it. There would be a way to get some of those skills in the second game. But instead I'll be reliant on means of, uh, you know, magical means of doing things. I do have the open spell, which would serve a similar purpose to, uh, you know, the uh, lockpicking skill. So I could potentially do some thievery that way. What I'm not certain about is how I would go about fencing the items that I had stolen. Okay, 13 stamina. Okay, that fruit is not nearly as good as I thought it was. Fighter, thief, and mage. So for you, one option. Oh no, I could be a fighter as well. Kind of wondering if I screwed myself over by buying that spell. Not going there just yet, thanks. Oh, crap. Oh, actually, I think we're okay. It's a limitation of these early Sierra games that you can't really have more than one or two moving things on screen at once, so when you are being chased by a brigand and you run into the stag, the brigand has to go. How's that, Mr. Soggy Roman? Mid-afternoon, day three.
Walking through the woods is very common in most of the Sierra games. There's an area in the map that is just forest. Nice. Most of this map is just forest. Um. I just saved. Eight silver coins. Hey, I might actually be able to afford a place at the inn. Okay, so my strength, agility, vitality, and luck have gone up again. My maximum health points and stamina points have gone up. My current health points and stamina points have gone down. Sketchy, it's going good. How are you doing? Just like to remind you folks, tomorrow is the long stream of the month for the month of July. And I'm going to do a 12 hour. We're going to be playing Quest for Glory. We're going to be continuing this game. So I hope to see you here for some of that. I'm glad to hear that, Sketchy. much what inventory 10 silver yeah i should be able to afford to eat and rest okay so i gained what one health point back and i gained a little stamina and i gained some magic Oh, thank you, Sketchy. Let me take a look at that, actually. Um, how is that channel thing doing? Base Quest 2 is in the lead. 19% of the vote. City Skylines is actually a fairly close second with 17% of the vote. And Pillars of Eternity, or uh, I shouldn't say of the vote. Space Quest 2 is 19% complete. City Skylines is 17% complete. And Pillars of Eternity is a little more distant in third, 11% complete. But it is very encouraging to me that uh, so many people are voting for the uh, Pillars of Eternity thing, because I do really want to play that and actually finish it one of these days. 
that is a thing that I would really love to do. And for you Space Quest fans, don't uh, don't you worry. It is going to be Retro Sunday in just a few days, and we will be working on Space Quest 1 and then moving on to Space Quest 2 when we finish that. Oh, wow, lots of, lots of people voting. Let me refresh this. Suddenly we're at Space Quest 2, 25% complete. Wow. Cities, Skylines, 20%. And Pillars of Eternity, 17%. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, David, don't you worry. You have not finished, or uh, sorry, you have not missed the end of Space Quest by any means. We're going to be doing uh, Quest for Glory all day tomorrow, but uh, Sunday, we're going to be doing Space Quest. On Saturday strategy saturday we're going to be playing a brand new game to me at least uh, i was gifted it by a member of the community it is called what is it clan folk i believe it's called and it's basically scottish rim world so we're going to be playing that and that looks like it's going to be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to it uh what time is it oh probably helps if i'm not on the browser Mid-afternoon on day three. When's the last time I took a break, actually? I feel like I missed one in there somewhere. One hit and I'm done. Maybe I should just not fight at this point. Uh, I, I might have to not fight. Ah. Okay, let's see. Look. A river plunges from more than 100 feet down the face of a cliff. A doorway has been built into the side of the cliff. Examine door. The door is built into the face of the mountainside. You suspect that the person who lives behind it treasures privacy. It's a large door. It must open pretty wide. 
The water seems to be trying to fly as it leaps from the mountain above. Oh, hang on. You fill an empty flask with crystal clear water from the waterfall. Water seems to be trying to fly as it leads from the mountain above. Not important. The grass is green with the freshness of new spring. So the problem is right now I can't get up there. I know you can use the climbing skill to scale this cliff if you practice enough, but I have no climbing, which means no amount of practice would be enough. I would just completely obliterate my stamina. I don't remember what the magical solution to this is. I know there is one, so I'm not too worried. Sunset approaches. Excellent. Now here's a question. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save here. We're going to attempt the trek to Arana's piece, even though I can probably afford the inn. I do have other spells to save up for after all. What? Off with you, brigand. Okay. You sleep comfortably among the fragrant flowers. You awake as the sun begins to rise. I'm fully healed. Excellent. And my intelligence, for some reason, went up. <laughs> Maybe because I ran from a fight I knew I couldn't win. I should have saved when I woke up. That might have been smart. You know, it's real weird. I don't remember Flame Dart being that difficult to use.
Nope, my intelligence still went up and I didn't have to run this time. Is he going to catch me? Nope. I don't think I ever examined the healer's garden. In front of the hut is a small garden in which grow the kinds of plants and herbs that are used for making potions. We need to go back to the magic shop. I need to remember which spells I don't have yet that I can get from her. I believe that I can get fetch from her. And that's the next one that I really need. Flame dart, got it. Fetch for 40. Don't got it. Open spell, 30. Okay, so I've already spent 90 silver here. I need 40 more, which means I really need 30. Okay. Let's go back to the dry goods store. I wonder if there's anything he might buy. I don't think there is. I think he sells only. Then again, I might also be able to get some stuff I need there. Weapons, armor, daggers, rations, ale flasks, and various foodstuffs. Ask about weapons. Unfortunately, I have only standard weapons and equipment, the shopkeeper tells you. I carry daggers and chain armor. Maybe someday I'll be able to carry magic ones, though. I can also sell you food or empty flasks for carrying liquids or powders. Ask about chain mail. You can get really good protection from my chainmail armor. It's very heavy, though, and I would have to charge you 500 silvers for it. Ask about flasks. It's a very good idea to carry an empty flask or two in case you want to pick up a liquid or something else that needs a container. Our flasks are a great bargain at two silvers each. Adventuring rations aren't the tastiest food in the world, but they will keep you healthy and alert as you go along. A pack of five rations will cost you just five silvers. Ah, the use of the dagger is a most, used, most skillful art. Actually, this particular weapon is longer than most, but still easily concealable. A bargain at 20 silvers. Okay, I have no need of any of that right now. Another flask is probably not a terrible idea, but I'm going to wait until I'm a little bit better off. So there are eight spells in this game. The two main combat spells are Zap and Fire Dart. Zap increases your next weapon attack. Next, oh, so it doesn't even affect all of your, wow, you have to do it every time you strike. And Flame Dart just does damage. You probably already knew that. Yeah, I I used to know that. I thought that Zap lasted for the duration of the fight, but I guess not.
So I guess I'm going to get more practice at, um, you know what, speaking of practice, actually. No, actually, I think you're right. The old archery target looks as though it has not been used in quite some time. One thing I really love about this game, and that it's maybe just the tiniest bit unfortunate for streaming, is that a lot of it is training montage. I don't think I'm actually attempting to hit the target, but that's okay. What just, oh my god. I think the game just shut down on me. Uh, why is it not showing up? No blue screen, just no screen at all. Yep. I've learned my lesson many a time. Oh, that part I knew. You could sleep to restore health. The problem is you can only sleep if it's nighttime. If it's not nighttime, you're out of luck. Okay. Okay, magic sixty three, intelligence thirty five. Skill 12. Flame dart skills going up nicely.
too impatient to rest. Attention, incoming raid. Please report to hospitality stations in a calm and orderly fashion. El Talera, Joduri, and other librarians will aid as need be. Please be ready to disperse library cards. CD, thank you so much for bringing your folks over with the raid. What is going on, guys? If you're not following Crystal Dragon 22, please make sure you go and correct this. Uh, CD, it's so good to see you. How are you doing this evening? Let me get you a shout out. Hey, Wiggles, how's it going? Hosted in the midst of a raid? Excellent. Thank you, Wiggles. I really appreciate that. Uh, let me get... Crystal, there we go. Um, oh, my bot is very unusually slow. Farming Simulator 22, CD. How did the Farming Simulator go? It's so good to see you. Welcome on in, folks. If you've never been here before, my name is Gordon McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a variety of games. Uh, I play a variety of games, mostly single-player story-driven games with excellent character and narrative development, but I also play a lot of strategy games and sand sandboxy games. And lately, I've been diving more and more into classic retro RPG and adventure games. So if any of that sounds good, please feel free to hit the follow button. I do have a little bit of a video to welcome you in properly as well. Hopefully that won't scare too many of you away. <laughs> Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, shoot. Form factor aspect ratio. Oh no 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 no! No oh, crap! Whoa! Yes. Whoa. <laughs> okay, that. Let's go for it. Oh. Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. May still be coming, actually. That's a little bit of a preview of what you can expect around these parts. Spent some more time working on my soybean farm again, trying to dig out of a bit of a bank loan situation. Uh-oh. Been going well now, though. Oh, that's good to hear. Hope your night is going great. Ah, uh, it's going mostly pretty well. Uh, we're having a little bit of a rough start to Quest for Glory 1. I am playing as a magic user, which or a mage, which is not a bad thing. But it does make early game survivability a little bit of a challenge. So there's that. Uh, but I hope you're doing well. I hope the farming simulator went well for you. Oh, geez. There's goblins everywhere. I would have been perfectly okay. Actually, what's my stamina? Seven. 10 and 9. Okay, so that's not too shabby. Let's see if I can find a goblin 
or something to fight. Things are going well here, CD. Except, uh, you know, very early game, kind of, this is, this is, um, this is a hybrid adventure slash RPG game. And it's got a lot of the early game survivability issues that a lot of retro RPGs had. It's very, very tough early on because your stats are very low. And this is very Skyrim-esque in a sense, in the way that you have to actually increase your stats by practicing the skills that you want to improve. Yeah, it's got a bit of the RPG grind going on, especially this game. This game and probably the second game are the worst for that. All of them have it to some degree, but this one and the second one are the worst. Okay, my stamina is bad. My health is really good, though. did not go as well as I'd hoped. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Maybe I should just practice my spells in actual combat instead of wasting them. I mean, it's a lot faster to waste them and get my stats up, but then I run into actual combat and I start dying. About as well as I can hope for, I have a good routine worked out with my soybeans that brings in about 160000 so my 500000 loan should start to disappear in pretty big chunks now. That's pretty awesome. One day, I actually need to give that game a try. I've never played it. I think I have not the most recent one. It's not Farming Simulator oh boy, uh, 2022, but... I'm pretty sure Humble gave me Farming Simulator 17 or something. I don't know. That's flame dart. Nope. Wow. Nine silver coins. Okay. Now my health is garbage again. My stamina is a little better. Magic, not bad. Weapon use actually went up one point. Thirty-five intelligence, eighteen agility, thirty-one vitality. I guess that's one good thing. Oh my God! Raid what the incoming. Do not panic. Please what? report to welcoming shelters immediately. Seek help from Joduri, El, Talera, or other librarians as needed. Be ready to distribute library cards. What the heck is going on? Rhubarb coming in with a raid now. Rhubarb, it's so good to see you. Let me get someplace a little bit safer. <laughs> Uh, Rhubarb, how are you doing this evening, folks? If you're not following Rhubarb, she's been a friend of the channel for a long, long time now. Please make sure you go give her a follow. What is going on, Rhubarb and friends? Thank you so much for visiting the library. Uh, if you've never been here before, my name is Gord McLeod. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I play a wide variety of narratively heavy games with excellent 
uh, character development as well as strategy games, sandboxy games, retro RPGs, and adventure games. So if any of that sounds good, please feel free to join our Lore Seekers and hit the follow button. I do have a little bit of a video to welcome you in properly as well. Hopefully it won't scare too many of you away. Welcome on in, folks. Let's get the stream started, shall we? Whoa! Oh, crap. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, uh, runaway helicopter. Oh, damn it. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, shoot. 69 form factor. Aspect ratio. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, crap. Whoa. Yes, whoa. <laughs> okay, that one. Hey, I have not, I have not looted that, sir. May still be coming, actually. It's a little bit of a preview of what you can expect around these parts. I'm so glad you guys love the video. You keep trying to read all the titles in the corner too. Excellent. You wouldn't believe how much effort I put into doing all the clips with all the dates and the titles. The dates in some cases are approximate. I didn't keep records for many years when I was streaming and I regret that. But uh, I, I've made them as close as I can get them and I'm Sometimes, you know, go back and actually redo ones that I discover if I learn new information about when they are. So see how that goes in the future. I keep a lot of records nowadays, though, so newer ones are much more accurate. Now, actually, um, let me pause. Oop, that's not what I want. <clears throat> there we go. Let me pause the game. I was trying to take a break right before Crystal Dragon came in with his raid, and I was just about to take a break when Rhubarb arrived with hers. I don't like to take a break immediately after our raid comes in, but I don't feel like I've really got a choice this evening. Uh, that's because I owe you guys, I just realized, I owe you guys a story time, which I'm going to take after my break, which I'm now extremely late for. And... I can't really put it off too much longer because I can't really stream too late tonight. I have to end at least reasonably close to my normal end time because tomorrow is the long stream of the month. Every month I do a long stream. Tomorrow it's going to be a 12-hour stream. I'm starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon until 4 o'clock in the morning. Attention, please. The Library of Lore would like to welcome our newest follower. What? Eld, show them in and get them a comfortable seat by the fire, please. Thank you so much for the follow. I do not know if you wish to be acknowledged in chat or not, so I'm not going to read out your name, but thank you for the follow. I really appreciate it. You are now a, an official lore seeker. Uh, yeah, I, I do need to take a break. I can't stream too late tonight because tomorrow is my 12-hour stream of the month. Uh, it's not always 12 hours. Sometimes I do eight-hour streams of the month, but uh, I did an eight-hour stream last week 
that was not the one for the month. That was just an opportunistic time grab because I my schedule allowed it. But this month, I'm planning for it. I'm doing 12 hours. We're going to be playing more Quest for Glory. Hopefully, we're going to make a lot of progress. It really depends on how survivable we can make this character. Uh, the, the magic user is very satisfying and fun to play, but they are really challenging right at the beginning because they are comparatively weak. But that's all right. We'll make do. We're already making strides. So I'm going to take a break. I'll be back in a few bit minutes. My breaks are usually about three and a half to five minutes long or so. When I get back, we're going to do story time. Um, let me see. Who was the one? Ah, Space Vikings. I don't know if... Are you still in chat, Space Vikings? If you are still in chat and you have a preference with regards to the story that we read this evening... Let me know in chat while I'm off on break, and I will accommodate you no problem. We'll read whatever one you want. Otherwise, I think we might do seven years of chaos when I get back. So we'll do story time in just a few minutes. So if you need to get up yourselves and get some food or a drink or a snack, whatever you got to do, this is a really good time to do it, and I'll be back in three and a half to five. Pacitus. Guard. Guard. Arrest this man immediately. See what I mean? Crap, now where'd it go? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> what is this gang up on Gordonite? Oh, hello. That is how you deal with trolls. And that blew the surprise. Now the raiders know I'm here. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, and I'm saved up here too. Phenomenal. Oh, and look at this. I'm coming up right on a shrine. That's really handy. Ah, oh my god. Wow. That nice. The power over life and death oh, baby. excites me. No, 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 move, move, move. Oh. Thanks, man. Oh, crap. Well, <laughs> I wanted to take out the billboard. That was not quite how I saw myself doing it. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> oh. I thought for a moment I was going right into the water.
Yes. <laughs> Journal entry added. Experience points received 200. Ah, clip show issues. That's fun. But I'm back. Okay. I think Space Vikings is AFK, but that's all right. We will go ahead with Seven Years of Chaos. Okay, just really quick, for those of you not familiar with what story time is, I have been calling this channel the Library of Lore for years now. What good is having a library of lore that has no lore of its own? I am a writer, so I've been doing a little bit of writing. I need to do a lot more writing, but I've been doing a little bit of writing. And I've written some of the lore of the library, just tales of some of the characters that you hear that come up in my alerts. Uh, you know, Joduri and Talera and all of them. Uh, this, These very short stories give you a little bit of background and uh, flesh them out as actual people and things like that and tie into some of the games that we play. So it's just a fun little thing that people seem to enjoy. So this is a story called Seven Years of Chaos. And thank you, Rhubarb and JH. <clears throat> the sun beamed through the library's windows at the end of another workday, a signal to those in the headquarters' main offices that it was time to pack it in for another evening. Some took the hint and got on about the rest of their business elsewhere. Others stayed behind, engrossed in one project or another. Joduri was one of the latter, though he eyed the door and rubbed his eyes to clear his vision. It had been a long day. His interest was suddenly caught by voices coming down the hallway outside. No, I swear it's true. Down at the local lower stacks just a couple of years ago. I was putting a copy of a movie away, Raiders of the Lost Ark, if I remember correctly, an original release version under the original name. I had the Amedia in hand, I was reaching it out to put it back in its shelf space, when out of nowhere, a giant boulder runs right down the hallway towards me. Marta, he thought, one of the library's legions of stack work stacks workers. Get out, a voice he didn't recognize said, more than a hint of excitement in his voice. That happens to everyone, really? Uh, Jojo thought, tales of the library's own mischief. There were fewer things he loved sharing stories of more than the library's attempts at keeping people's lives interesting. He hopped off his chair. Stretching his legs was probably not a bad idea anyway. You'd better believe it. I had to climb a ladder to get out of its way. The damn rock knocked the ladder right over, sent me tumbling back into the aisle. Thankfully, I landed behind it with nothing worse than a twisted ankle for my trouble. Marta, entertaining the newcomers again, Joduri asked, reaching the door to the hall. Jod, Jaren, meet a library legend. Joduri here has been keeping this place running since before your grandparents were born. Jod, Jaren here has been with us a couple of months now. His eyes are finally opening to the realities of library life. Aye, it's true, lad. The library is funny that way. It has a special connection with media and with reality, and the line between them sometimes gets a bit blurry. I got this, he said, indicating a peculiar scarring pattern of squares running down his forearm, in pretty much the same way Marta had her incident. Was returned in a movie to its media collection. Free Guy was the name. Film about computer-simulated artificial life. The library de res the shelf just as I was putting it back. Took a bit of my arm with it, too. Just happened last week. Marta nodded at Joduri's story. And not that far from here, if I remember right now. Joduri paused a moment. That's true. And now that you mention it, that's a bit concerning. It had always been possible for such things to happen anywhere in the library, but they almost never happened in the area local to the headquarters. Two instances within a lifetime was unusual. Two instances within as many years? Such a thing had never happened before. A bit concerning was some serious understatement. That's two in as many years, Marta said, mirroring Joduri's thoughts. Is that a lot? Jaren asked. It's unheard of, Marta said. And in the library, that's really saying something. What can we do about it? Jaren said, face tightening in concern. What else? Joduri replied. We get more information. There's no shortage of that, at least. The next several days were a flurry of activity from all the senior library staff, extending quite a few rungs down the hierarchy as people flitted about, fetching information and running it through various analyses. Then, over several more days, the flurry of activity became a storm as more information was pulled and the analyses were run over and over again. It's inescapable, Joduri said. 
Marta, Jaron, Hilera, and a number of others looked to him uneasily at the words. How many times have we run the data? How many references have we checked? How many records did we pull? Almost too many to count, Marta admitted. Something changed in 2014. Several things changed in 2014, Hilera chimed in. Wasn't that the year that, Jaron began, that Head Lorari and Gord rose to his current position in the library? Yes, Jodari said, sighing and pacing the corridor. We don't know that that's actually the cause, Marta said. It's possible that it's unrelated, a side effect of some other change. Anything is possible, Jodari agreed, nodding, but speculating ain't getting us anywhere. We need to double down and get more... He was cut off by a sudden roaring as a vehicle that resembled nothing so much as a motorcycle with drone air rotors in place of wheels popped into their world frame just down the hall and exploded in a gout of fire, metal fragments, plastic shards, bullets, and blood. What the hell? Marta screamed. Alara dove under a large piece of flying debris, rushing to the aid of the pilot, a young Hispanic woman. I know this kind of vehicle, Alara yelled over the din. They use these in Yara. The head librarian has had a lot of dealings with that place in the last few weeks. Nobody really knew exactly what the head librarian got up to in his office, but those who got close to the doors claimed they often heard voices, as though he was addressing a large number of people. Other sounds were common. Gunshots and laughter. An unusual combination, to say the least. It had never been that way with any previous head librarian that Joduri had ever known. Some of the staff helped with subscribers and follows and contributions to the library itself, but the specifics were always a little vague. A third incident in two years. Two of them within weeks of each other. A connection to the head office, maybe the head librarian had built. Joduri had a sinking feeling that chaos was going to become the new normal around the library headquarters from that point on. There you go. That's story time. I have in the past, Wiggles. It's been a while. I haven't really had a lot of time with all the streaming. But I used to do NaNoWriMo and Camp NaNoWriMo. All right. What time is it? Day is dawning on day four. My God. Uh, I'm almost dead, and the day is just barely beginning. Maybe we should check on the, how much it costs to actually buy potions. I have a feeling they're going to be too expensive. Ask about potions. I make and sell healing potions, magic potions, vigor potions, and undead unguent. 40 silvers for healing. Holy crap. That's so expensive. Thank you, CD. That's basically raw first draft writing. I can do better than that. I will edit them one of these days. I swear. I am, yes. Sorry, I wasn't listening. Could you repeat yourself? Open the gate. Thank you, sir. Yep. Was almost in Monty Python there at the gate. It does kind of look a little similar, doesn't it? Excellent. Thank you. Let's see. Examine man. A low-looking lout. He could use some cleaning up. Okay. 24 silver. I need 40 for the next spell that I need to get. And how are my stats looking? Stamina is a bit low. 
Okay, so I healed another point. That's good. And my stamina is a little higher. Actually, it's quite a bit higher. That's not bad. I suppose if we build a large wooden badger, oh my god. Just trying to think if there's anything I can do. Okay, I'll spare a little bit to get that. I don't have a use for it in mind right this moment, but I'm sure I'm going to need one. We'll explore a little bit. Okay, that's not where I need to be. Oh, it's the Antwerp. We don't want to go there yet. Oh, okay. We're back here again. That doesn't really help right now. Again, you feel a sense of closeness with nature. What a beautiful animal. Unfortunately, that's not really why I'm here. Oh. What? I forgot about these guys. You are in the Meep's Peep. The colorful furry Meeps timidly pop out of their holes from time to time. You see blue Meeps, purple Meeps, and occasionally a green Meep. They seem to be very shy. Whenever you approach one, it hides under its rock. Large, heavy-looking rocks cover the many holes. The meeps must be stronger than they look to lift these rocks so easily. You keep seeing differently colored meeps come out of each hole. They either lead to a large underground to large underground caverns, or they are all connected under the earth. Not what I'm looking for. Uh oh. Also, not what I'm looking for. 
very definitely not what I'm looking for. Can you sing to the meeps? I'm sure I could type that. I don't think it would do anything, though. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay. Nope. Nope. <laughs> don't want any of that. Thank you. I'm very confused. I'm trying to remember. There, there's a wizard that lives somewhere in the game, and I want to remember how to get back there because that's a very important place for a wizard in this game. It's the Wizard of Rasmus. And I can't for the life of me remember where his place is. But we've covered most of the edge of the map now, so let me see. I guess it almost has to be somewhere north east of here. Ah, look at that. That is indeed the house. A sign appears. It reads, Wilkemen of Zilberberg. Another sign appears. It reads, Proceed at your own risk. You feel as though you have just scaled the Matterhorn in full armor. What a climb. After you finally catch your breath, you see that you have reached the rather eccentric-looking house that you saw from below. There is an ugly gargoyle above the entrance. You don't give up easily, do you? He who would the wizard see first must answer questions three. What is your name? What is your favorite color? Purple, clearly. Whose spell protects the town? That is correct. The wizard will see you now. Go directly up to the tower. Do not dally. This room is full of odds, ends, and stuff. The wizard must be a real character. I would like to save, please. Okay. There is a strange figure on a shelf above the stairs. It looks like an overgrown rat wearing a wizard's hat. Your eyes are drawn to the edges, eyes of the figure in the portrait. His intense stare is unnerving. This would not be someone to trifle with, for he looks subtle and quick to anger. This item appears to be an ebony chest. It could contain anything. Dredging up your ancient Egyptian, you translate the hieroglyphs. She of the golden hair. This is an excerpt from the Rosala Stone. <laughs> there is a picture next to the message. Oh my god, that's a King's Quest IV reference, by the way.
You can make out the runes imprinted on the strange device. Acme Toy Company. Oh my, it's a Dunkin' Dragon. You thought they were only found in myths and legends. You have no idea what it is, but it has the words Light and PD inscribed upon it. That's got to be a police quest reference. It was a moderately large and fearful dragon at one time. The books on the shelves of the bookcase appear to be very old, very rare, and very magical. You find titles like Zen and the Art of Magical Maintenance, How to Be a Halfling, The Sensuous Succubus, and Tobin's Spirit Guide Volume 2, Asmodeus to Casper. Ghostbusters reference. The shield looks like it belonged to one of those once and future kings. By golly, it's a rare Peruvian onkelunk. The poor stuffed peacock seems bedraggled, worn, and overused. The ball of light floats magically over the center of the room. It is a standard roll-top desk. There is nothing on it. The suit of armor was made for someone much taller than you. The plaque underneath it reads, Bequeathed by Colonel Golden Dijon. That's a Colonel's Bequest reference. Oh, Acme's referenced everywhere, CD. Fenris, our guest, has arrived. Cheese, please. Ah. Since you're a practitioner of the magical arts, you might be interested in a little game I have. Do you know how to cast the open spell? Do you know how to cast the fetch spell? No. Too bad, you can't really play the game without it. You can buy a learning scroll at Zara's magic shop in town. Zara has a real flair for the theatric. Her method of greeting customers at her shop is showy but effective. It's a pity she has no sense of humor. Just because she never laughs at your jokes doesn't mean that she lacks a sense of humor. It just means that she has good taste. Baba Yaga is good at curses and shape-changing spells. She has a nasty temper, so it's best to stay on her good side. You have to watch her. She cheats at cards. So do you. She started it. I just wanted to give her a taste of her own medicine. It's a shame she still beats you. Had no idea it was used in more than those cartoons. Oh, it's a pretty, pretty common placeholder company name i'm crashing here so i'm gonna call out now adios hope your aim for writing again returns i'll oh, it definitely will it always does it's more a matter of time than anything else ask about brigands they have a supposed warlock working with them from what i've seen he's more nincompoop than necromancer The only thing that I've seen the Brigand Warlock cast is Sneezing Powder. Curses. The curse Baba Yaga placed upon Baron von Spielberg was a fine example of creative cursing. Upon Spielberg and all his clan, this curse I now demand. What I will shall come full measure, so shall ye lose all that ye treasure. Of course, the problem is that for every curse, there is an equal and opposite counter curse. A counter curse is the cure for a curse. It usually works against the one who cast the curse in the first place. The counter curse for the curse on the Baron goes Come a hero from the east, free the man from in the beast, bring the child out from out the band. Drive the cursor from the land. So, to break the curse, a hero must get rid of Baba Yaga in addition to all the other things. It does not reflect well on Baba Yaga. Nothing reflects well upon that ogress. She has a face that would break all but a magic mirror. Hint, hint. 
ask about spells. It's important for a magic user to know as many spells as possible. You never know what might come in handy. Ask about scrolls. It would be best to wait until Erasmus puts down his cup of tea before asking any more questions. Okay. Ask about... This game looks ancient. Is this one of them? Yes, it is, Jada Master Grogu. Uh, I'm not sure what year this one came out specifically. Let me see. Best for Glory 1. Nineteen eighty nine. Uh, what am I asking about? So, actually, it's relatively recent. There are much older games out there. Ask about game. Just a little something to challenge the mind and the magic. I like to play it every now and then, but Fenris isn't much of a challenge anymore. That's because I always win. I still think you're cheating somehow. Anyway, the game involves casting four spells, Flame, Dart, Open, Fetch, and Trigger. And to make it worth your while, if you beat me, I'll teach you a spell called Dazzle. Ask about Trigger. The Trigger spell is used to set off an existing spell, just like pulling the spell's Trigger. For example, if a chest has a magical trap on it, you can set off the trap by casting a Trigger spell. Just make sure you're out of range of the trap. I can set up other spells and let someone else trigger them. I fixed Henry the Hermit's cave for him so that he can do a lot of magic with only one spell. Ask about Henry. Henry is a hermit who lives by the Flying Falls to the south. Great sense of humor. That means he actually laughs at Erasmus's jokes. I think he borrowed something the last time I saw him, but I can't remember exactly what it was. Oh, well, Henry is a great one to talk to. But he hardly ever happens to have much to say. Ask about... Wasn't sure if it released around that time or was a retro-inspired Steam game. Nope, this is a classic original. It's one of the classic Sierra Online adventure games. Actually, this one specifically is a hybrid adventure RPG game. In a lot of ways, it actually kind of resembles the Elder Scrolls series, because you've got stats that improve as you practice them. Uh, dazzle. Now that's a spell with charm. Its true name is Erasmus's Razzle Dazzle, by the way. You cast the spell and anyone looking directly at its coruscating light is blinded for a while and can't do anything. That sounds like some of the magic that was used by the brigand warlock. Okay, well... It's just so wild to me to input your own commands like that. Yeah, this game predates the arrival of the uh, point-and-click adventure games, which are actually called point-and-click adventure games, specifically to distinguish them from text-parsing adventure games, which is what this is. After point-and-click started to become more common, you started to see far fewer of these text-parsing ones around. I'm kind of wondering, actually, if this style of command input might make a bit of a return now that AI is getting so much better at parsing text commands like this. Like, one of the reasons people stopped doing it is that it was always 
really, really frustrating and difficult to get the games to understand exactly what you were trying to do because you have to be very specific in your wording. But these days, I think it would be a lot easier to do this kind of game and make it not quite as frustrating for the player. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm familiar with that game. I don't think I've heard of Snatcher. Oh, ask about Irana. Never met her. I only built this vacation home here a century ago. Irana has a nice little magical meadow in her name northeast of here. Pretty respectable spellcaster, I imagine. The protection spell she cast over the town is fairly good, but I believe she missed a few places. You're just jealous because the only thing anyone ever named after you was a soft drink. I thought Erasmus's Root and Tootin' Root Beer was a wonderful name for a product. It's a shame the company went broke after that. Do you know which has more legs, one cow or no cow? You're right, no cow has more than four legs. These are too easy. Um... Games like this always discouraged me from playing because of how specific they needed the query to be. Ah, uh, that's kind of a shame. You get used to it after a while and you start to learn what it is the games are requiring of you. I hope it does. I think the parsers were limited by the time developers had to add vocabulary and interpretations. Well, yeah, that's a big part of it. But, I mean, you're talking about parsing English text which is very complicated. And then that's assuming that you're only releasing in English speaking areas, let alone the challenges of having to actually, you know, translate that, do localization. Um, ask about Fenrus. Actually, that's probably offensive. Wizard. Basically, anyone who uses magic is a magic user. Anyone who casts spells is a spellcaster. However, in order to be a wizard, you need to have undergone initiation into the Wizards Institute of Technosory in the South. Magicians and sorcerers are wizards who specialize. For myself, I prefer to master all aspects of magic, unlike the narrow-minded specialists. You wouldn't want to lose your amateur standing, after all. I prefer to think of myself as a dilettante. Does that mean you tease pickles? You need to complete your quest here before you can become initiated as a wizard. Okay. So that'll be in Quest for Glory 2, then. That's kind of true, but, like, let's say you were convinced you had the right word, but you're playing hot and cold trying to nail the right usage, or maybe you need to make the word plural. Yeah, Grogu, there are lots of examples like that. I, I actually watched someone play this game relatively recently who ran into a, a very specific kind of issue. I could actually show you the exact location. Do you know the difference between a wounded Triceratops and a magic user casting the fly spell? One is a raging Saurus and the other is a soaring Magus. I figured one was a dying lizard and the other was a flying wizard. Sorry, Fenris, but he who tells the jokes gets to make up the punchlines. Wow. Well, if you really must go. We're going to be visiting Erasmus a number of times. People who don't know English well have a really hard time learning it, so it's easy to see why a computer in those years would have struggled. Yes. 
I'll admit these games do take patience. Sierra games would take me weeks to beat back in the day. Yeah, and it really didn't help that they, you know, the early ones, not so much. But by the time you got to this point, they were releasing on several discs. And loading an area might have you change discs three or four times. So, yeah, it, it could be an interesting challenge going through some of these. What do you mean by PNC? What time is it? Sunset approaches already. Wow. Okay. Oh, point and click. Um, they did VGA remakes in point and click style for King's Quest One, Space Quest One, Quest for Glory One, and Leisure Suit Larry One, I believe. I don't think they ever did it for Police Quest, and they never did it for any of the later games in any of those series. So, no you know, King's Quest Two or Quest for Glory Two or any of that. This area in particular, this is uh, where a particular streamer I watched had some difficulty. Examine ground. You see nothing special. Examine floor. It looks like something you'd expect to see in a tavern, but a lot dirtier. Notice how those two words, which some people take as being equivalent terms, that it should respond the same in both cases, actually gives a different response. It's not very meaningful right now because the key thing that you learn in this particular area, I've already gotten, so there's no meaningful distinction. But it caused no end of grief because uh, this streamer examined the ground instead of the floor and so was not told about something that would have been very helpful. Had I been playing, I'd have noped out of this game at that point. <laughs> uh, it's like I said, you just get used to what the game requires of you. Oh, now here's the question. Do I want to stay at the inn or should I go back to Arana's Grove again? I'm going to save the game and try the Arana's Grove thing. Just because I do still have spells I need to save up money to get, and so I don't really... I, I kind of want to cheap out on the cost of accommodations. Oh, shoot. What time is it? The night is still young. Crap. All right. This is going to be an interesting trip. I'm going to run the whole way. Oh, boy. I don't think that's... so. Oh, it is hostile. This is irritating. It's right there. If I can just make it like two more pixels. Actually, hang on. Confidently, you cast the calm spell. 
Why, how cute. You cast the calm spell and the monster visibly relaxed. Why, now it's calmly and relaxedly ripping you to shreds and eating you. <sighs> you should have studied harder. Wow. I'm spoiled that we're now in an age where we don't have to engage in this kind of gameplay anymore, but at the same time, we could choose to play this retro stuff if we were really desperate for this genre. Wow, Grogu, you make it sound like it's some terrible burden. This is something that I really, really love. This is like the best kind of input. I love these games. Okay, we're going to restore, we're going to attempt that again, and we're going to hope like hell we don't encounter one of those mantas. Because, yikes. That was not good. And that was freaking hard to get away from. Ah! Oh god! Cheetar! Whew! Okay. You sleep comfortably among the fragrant flowers. You awake as the sun begins to rise. Ah, uh, so, what time is it? Day is dawning on day five. Okay, guys. I think that's going to about do it for me. It's actually later than I thought it would be when I ended stream. I have to get to bed a little bit early tonight because I'm doing a 12-hour stream starting at 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time tomorrow. So basically, if you go back almost half an hour and then go ahead 12 hours, that's what time I'm starting. Did this game come with a glossary of all the keywords and terms you could use? No, but it did come with a list of suggested words that you might use. It was not an exhaustive list. It understands more words than it gave you in the list, but it was enough to get you going and it would get you through the game for the most part. It gave you a really good idea of what you were trying to do. Sadly, the world moved on to stuff like Fortnite. Hey, there's nothing wrong with Fortnite. I mean, it's not my kind of game. I don't play that sort of thing, but there's nothing wrong with it. You know, the beauty of the games industry is there's stuff for everybody out there. Uh, let me see if we can find who else is on. I have a pretty good idea of where we're going to land up, though. We will be playing this tomorrow as well, by the way. Based on how it's going today, I am not entirely certain that we're going to finish it tomorrow. In fact, I'm pretty certain we're not going to. It's difficult enough to get going as a mage that I would expect we're going to we're going to be struggling for a little while before combat becomes reasonably easy. Uh, but uh, we'll make some pretty significant progress, I would hope and see what we can do about uh, doing some stuff. I think relatively fast tomorrow we'll be able to make enough progress that we can make a few substantive leaps. Okay, so let me see here. Hodon Kane is playing some Dead by Daylight. Greeny Trini, of course, is on. He's playing some Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Palette Box is playing Paths of Palatonia. I don't know what that is, but it's some kind of tabletop RPG game, presumably. Rose Hoppa is playing Genshin Impact. Oz 90s Kid is doing a birthday stream and he's playing Super Mario Bros. 3. Simcopter 1 is playing Fall Guys. T with Mandy is playing Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I forgot, that's actually just new out today. She's doing a launch stream of that. 
Sarah Key is on playing Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix, and she is not ending her stream until she platinums it. What if Julia is playing House Flipper? And that's about it. So if you guys have a particular preference, like I said, I have, I'm, I'm pretty certain I know where we're going. But if you guys do have a preference with regards to the game or streamer, then let me know in chat. I'd like to believe that if it weren't for games like this, we wouldn't have Fortnite. Oh, that's actually very true, Grogu. I have to run to my eye doctor appointment, so gonna miss the raid. That's okay, JH. I hope the appointment goes well. I will be playing cards with my family again in rare second occasion tomorrow. Super excited for that. That's awesome, CD. Birthday stream is pretty tempted, Jedi, but I'm kind of thinking we might have to go with Greeny, actually. Just because I've been waiting for this particular... I'm noticing his thumbnail. He's playing Mass Effect 3 in the Legendary Edition playthrough, and he's doing the Citadel DLC. I think... It's hard to tell. He might still be doing the party. Let me load up his stream just real quick. Yeah. Oh, perfect. He is doing the party. We're going to... Uh, I, I do kind of hate to miss the birthday stream, but we got to go with Greeny. All right, folks. Here at the Library of Lore, we use Library Raid. You've been bookmarked with the heart emote of the channel and the wave emote of the channel if you're a sub. If you're not a sub, you can use the Twitch Raid and the Toom Raid emotes in either case, sub or non-sub. I encourage you to use any emote you feel is fun and appropriate for a raid. Just copy the raid message and... Copy the raid message and arrange the emotes you want to use the way you want them to appear. It'll all be good in my book. Let's get over to Greeny's channel and see how the party's going for him. Uh, we'll see what's going on with his Mass Effect Citadel DLC playthrough. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for a super long stream about roughly starting, you know, give or take 12 hours from now. So uh, I got to go get ready for that and get some rest and all that so uh let's meet over in greenie's place and i'll see you back here then yeah i'm sorry low fat i will be back on tomorrow though like i said for a super long time i'll be doing a 12 hour so uh, i don't know if you're around tomorrow but you can always stop in and check that out we will be playing this same game we'll be doing quest for glory so it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm really looking forward to it I will catch you guys again real soon. So have yourselves a wonderful rest of your night, day, evening, whatever it is where you are in the world. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now. Wait, 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 whoa. Hang on, hang on. You fool. I hadn't looted the place. Damn it. Supercharge boost. Excellent. Okay. Oh, what do you like to do for fun? Whatever's next. That's what's fun. Oh crap. <laughs> oh. Thought for a moment I was going right into the water. Um, that that is totally a thing that works in real life by the way 
that's a, definitely a thing you could do without getting yourself murdered underneath the vehicle. Oh, 